Thanks, Russ. Well, right that's loud, isn't it? Uh, can I start news on Madam with you all? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You seem like a nice bunch of people. Before going any further, big thanks. I haven't said all yet. <laughs> uh, a big thanks to Russell, who, who I've only just met tonight, but uh, top guy. So thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Top man, you. I feel like I've known him years. Uh, also, he's asked me to... Sorry, we're a speeding. Uh, he's asked me to say... There's one or two ladies in the room tonight, so I don't have them blind all the time. There's not many of you in, just enough to fuck, just enough to make it a little bit difficult. <laughs> I'm only kidding, ladies. I don't take the mickey out of the ladies. Uh, anybody that plucks their eyebrows and then draws them back on <laughs> is up there for me, if I'm being honest, to be fair. <laughs> if we did that, we'd call it self-armed. <laughs> So, no, it's lovely. And, and obviously, I don't want to let him down because he's quite a big lad, isn't he? To be fair, if, if I found him in bed with my wife, I, I'd tuck him in. <laughs> uh, and then kick his dog. So, so no, it's lovely to be here. So, I'm just cheeky, not blue. That's all right, isn't it, ladies? Yeah. Uh, you've probably gathered by now, I'm a Yorkshire lad. I'm from a little place called Halifax. <laughs> we, you're not from Halifax, are you? Rip, that's posh Rippenden, that's not Halifax. Do you get Big Issue delivered? <laughs> that's really posh, is that? Rippenden is really posh. In fact, actually, do you know Mixenden? Yeah. That is a bit. That's where pigeons fly upside down because there's no to shit on, don't they? they it's <laughs> I, I used to go out with a girl from Mixenden and she took me home to meet her mum and dad and uh, they were mine. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, no, I've come across from Halifax tonight uh, when, when Russell said, would you come across? They seem like a good bunch of people. They just want to have a bit of fun after dinner. I said, that sounds good to me. But if I'm being honest, I'm just glad to be out at house. <laughs> I'll tell you why. And just nod, lads, if it's ever happened to you. Two days ago, my wife of 11 years, which is quite old for a Filipino... That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> a few ladies going, <laughs> it's a joke, she's 12. But two, just not if it's ever happened to you. Two days ago, she found me on one of these porn sites. There's a few lads nodding. <laughs> it, it's not funny when you get caught, is it? To be fair, he's off his head here. You, you, should, you were brilliant on the crystal maze, but I normally work on my own. <laughs> He's a top lad. I like him already. No, no, we love you to bits. And that's why I say I'd, I like to get you on side because my wife can spot a blonde hair on a man's jacket at half past three in the morning under a 40 watt bedside lamp. But can't see garage doors with headlights on. So. We, we, I know what you're thinking. There's one or two ladies now looking at me. I'd just like to test you because you're thinking he's sexist. He's going to take Mickey out of us because there isn't so many of us. Well, you're wrong. I have a go at the lads as well. You're totally wrong. I'm only upset because we've fallen out and she asked me questions that I can't answer. They do, don't they? We went out for tea last week. I thought, I'll, I'll treat her. I'll take her out for tea. You know, Subway. <laughs> it's expensive now, you know. And, and we're getting ready to go out and she put a cardigan on. She said to me, will I be warm enough in this? How the fuck? How, how, how do I? Anyway, I got it wrong. I'm in the shit we haven't spoke since last Wednesday. I want to have a word with my couple of lovely people down here from Rippenden. Halifax is great, isn't it? I was born there in the 60s. And if you want to know what Halifax was like in the 60s, just go there now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's true, isn't it? If you went for a three-mile jog, you'd still be at the scene of the crime. <laughs> it's one of them places where Ethiopia have had a look at us and thought, oh, let's do a concert for them. <laughs> That's how bad it's got. I went in Morrison's the other week. This big woman behind County, she said, do you want cash back? I said, no, thank you. She kept me change. Now, I know we're from all over the country today. We're, we're from Scotland and everywhere, aren't we? And, 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 yeah, Scotland and Wales. And I've got, I've got uh, Irish family. Any Irish in? 
Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding because I did, who did, these lads are coming. Have you reached the verdict, lads? <laughs> I don't need to know this, you know. I have got money. I have. It's just that it's tied up at my dad's house at the moment. That's all. So I've I've come across tonight from a little place called Halifax, like I say. But I love doing what I do. I'm only kidding, by the way, lads. I don't want to fight. All right. <laughs> One of you two young lads. It's like the wanted at the front here. Look. I don't. Uh, I hope farmers in. <laughs> I don't. You've probably gathered by now, I'm not racist, I'm not sexist, I don't swear all the time and I don't attack the audience, but it's getting harder now. Uh, it is, it's getting hard, you can't say anything. I did a cruise ship, I'm from Halifax, exactly, yeah. I did a cruise ship the other week, right? He learned to whisper under a helicopter, didn't he? <laughs> I, uh, I did a cruise ship a few weeks ago. Now, I'm not bragging. I'm complaining. Because <laughs> most of the people on ship, they, they were like you lot down here, were like full cast of cocoon on one ship, right? <laughs> they were like Russell, not, not you, mate, apart from you. Uh, all, all portals were bifocal. <laughs> and they said to me, you can't say this. <laughs> they said, they said, you can't say this. You, I'm not supposed to be laughing, am I? They said, you can't say this, you can't say that. I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm supposed to be here to make them laugh and have a bit of fun. I said, can I tell the Irish jokes? They went, no, it's racist. I said, you're kidding, aren't you? One of my favourite comedians, some of the older guys I remember, were a lad called Dave Allen. Do you remember Dave Allen? What a great comedy. He changed the face of comedy. He used to sit there with his glass of whiskey, didn't he? My mate's got it. Flick his ash off his knee. He was brilliant. He used to tell stories. So I got on this ship, and this is how ridiculous it's got. I said, my favourite Belgium joke. Have we got any Belgians in? No. One or two Belgians. <laughs> Shut up, yo. <laughs> They've got it wrong all together. I told you it, but I said, have we got any Belgians in? They went, no. I said, well, my favourite Belgium joke, right? There's a block of flats in Dublin, in Brussels. <laughs> in Belgium. And it's on fire. And on the ninth floor... There's just a woman and a baby left, and the fire brigade are trying to coax the woman to throw the baby onto the blanket. And they're going, <laughs> throw the baby. Because I can't do a Belgium accent, you see. <laughs> I can't do an accent. <laughs> that's the third time that's happened. Did you hear that? I said, you can't do an Irish one either. Tro Throw the baby out, she's both going to burn. She said, no, you'll drop her. He said, throw the baby and she's both going to burn. She said, no, you'll drop her. Old fellas, listen to this. He said, what's going on? He said, there's just the two of them left. If she doesn't throw the baby, they're both going to burn. He said, leave it to me. He said, listen, sweetheart, I've been the Irish-Belgium goalkeeper <laughs> for the last 10 years, and I've never dropped a ball. She thinks I trust him. So baby goes out of that balcony. Now you'll have to bear with me because it was windy. <laughs> Last second, Gusta Wind takes the baby to his right. Well, he's off like a salmon. <laughs> One handed, he catches the baby and brings it back into his chest safe. Can't believe it. The crowd's gone mental. Goalie went. And then you get all the Irish people on the ship coming up the after going, ooh, I love them Belgium jokes. You get, that's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You've also probably gathered by now, I'm not the brightest button in the box. No, I am a bit thick. It's all right, I don't mind. I am a bit thick. I'm from Halifax, yeah? I've got mates over here, mate. Yeah, ripping in. All right, I love you. I am from Halifax, I'm not the brightest button in the box. I've got three kids, two girls, one I can't stand. <laughs> he started it. The wife says I'm childish. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but because I want my kids to have a good environment, right? I've, I've learned how to recycle. I say I've learned, it's taken me two and a half years to get it right. Now you're probably thinking, you're looking at me now, you're thinking, where's he going with this? Just bear with me. It's ridiculous. I've got bins and bags and boxes 
all over my chuffing house is doing me head in. I've had an extension built to cope with everything. And I've got, now where you're from, wherever you live, your bins and your bags and your boxes will be different coloured to mine. So bear with me. And please don't interrupt me, because I'll get it wrong. I've got a green bag, a white bag, a black box, a little brown box, a bigger brown box, and a wheelie bin. I have to shred my paper up, fold my card up, put it in the green bag, but only thin card. I have to put tins, no lids, wash them out, in the black box, with the bottles, no tops, wash them out, don't smash them. I have to put food and bones in the little brown box, but once a week transfer the little brown box into the bigger brown box for collection. I've got a white bag, I have to put plastic bottles, no tops, wash them out, squash them. I've got a five foot wheelie bin, uh, and I fuck all I put in it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's going bad, isn't it? It's, tri it's ridiculous. I apologise for the strength of that language under my breath, ladies, but it's doing me head in. And the trouble is, we've got different collection days, and nobody knows which one's which. So we get up at half past six to see what everybody else is putting out, don't we? <laughs> we do, we're all curtain twitches now. It's all right doing that, but I live on a cul-de-sac, so if Trevor at number three gets it wrong, we're knackered, everybody gets it wrong. He come home from work, he's still there, he's a twat, he does it on purpose. <laughs> the world's going mad. I said earlier about the sexism and all this, ladies, I'm glad you're chuckling, because I, like I say, you've, you've got to be very careful what you say. If I have a go at you all night, you go, he's sexist. If I have a go at the lads all night, I'm having a go at lads, they don't mind. When you've been in a long-term relationship and the wife or the girlfriend or both <laughs> says to you, I need some space, it means f go to your mum's for a bit. Because <laughs> you're getting on the nerves, doesn't it? Now, it's normally Ford Super Sunday 5 to 4 just before kick-off. And they need this space then, don't they? She said to me a few weeks ago, it was a big game. She said, I need some space, go to your mum's, Pack all your clothes that belong to you and all your rugby trophies, runners up. <laughs> <laughs> and get out. So I'm trying to I didn't I wouldn't help me. I'm trudging to the front door. I've got two bags, that's all. <laughs> Full of trophies, thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, runners up. <laughs> I'm trudging to the front door and I'm trying to look upset now. I was like, well, I'm thinking a week at my mum's, fridge full of beer, tea on the table every night. I'm devastated. <laughs> As I got to the front door to leave, the wife turned to talk to me. And when they talk to you really slowly, that's when you're really mad, aren't you? And she said to me, before you go, I wish you a slow and painful death. I said, oh, you want me to stay now then? <laughs> one, of, one of the perks of this job, if you like, if you call it a perk, is the fact that I'm a sportsman myself and I get to meet some of my sporting heroes. Also, I get to meet some nice people as well. A few months back, I got invited to do a dinner in Manchester at the Midland Hotel with Nigel Ben, the boxer. Do you remember Nigel Ben? They were called the Dark Destroyer, 49 fights or something, 148 and all this. Great guy. And the phone call went like this. Lee Roberts, I said, speaking, he went, putting a dinner on in Manchester, Midland Hotel, 650 people, black tie, mixed audience, with Nigel Ben, the Dark Destroyer, the boxer. Can you do that? I said, I'll have a go. He said, that'll do. He said, you're booked. Do you want to bring your wife along? It's a mixed audience. I said, I will do, because she loves boxing. Especially Sundays, about five to four. <laughs> so I said to the wife, do you want to come to this dinner? I'm, I'm on with Nigel Ben. She said, oh yeah, I'd love to see him. She said, but I'll need something new. I said, I'll get you something nice. So I got her a new dress, ladies, from Matt Allen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to go. I went to Matt Allen last week, and I'm not joking, it's like this, isn't it? Cashier number three, please. <laughs> Cashier number three. Yeah, you're over here, mate. Cashier number three. It takes you about 20 minutes to get to it till, doesn't it? 
Get a jolly full of shit for three quid. And then that woman behind the counter goes, have you got your Matalan card? <laughs> like it's some sort of gold card. How many lads do you see at bar in your town centre on a Saturday night accidentally dropping the Matalan card for some bird to find it? Just leave it there. Yeah, yeah she's got it. Who's oh, this? this? <laughs> That'll be mine, love, because I'm a Matalan man. It's not going to work, is it? I once bought her a bikini from Matalan. They were no wrong with it. Well, I say they were no wrong with it. One of the cups on her breast were a bit tight, but the other two cups <laughs> were fine. We weren't going to see Nigel Benoit Saturday. On the Wednesday, she wants to try the dress on. We love you for this, ladies, because that's meticulous. That dress has got to look exactly how it's going to look on Saturday. So that's two spray tans, two hairdos, all earrings, everything, so that we get the effect. This is Wednesday. She's gone into the bathroom to try the dress on. She's been in there 43 minutes. I only know it's 43 minutes because I've had a tin and a half out of the fridge. That's how I time everything. Now, bearing in mind, typical northern lad, my mum and dad tried to bring me up right. They said, respect your elders. Don't swear in front of ladies unless it's in context. Treat people how you want to be treated because what goes around comes around. Best bit of advice I've ever had that. In fact, my dad worked the brightest, but he always taught us manners. He said, if a lady walks into a room, you should stand up. I think that's why he lost his disability allowance, to be fair. And, <laughs> and he said to me, honesty is the best policy. No, it's not. It's not, is it? When you're married, you've got to know when to tell a little white lie. My wife tells me little white lies because I'm daft as a brush just to keep me happy. And we need to learn. I'll explain. She come out of the bathroom. She went, oh! Because we get on. <laughs> I've come to the bottom upstairs with my tin of lager. She stood in the bathroom doorway. She said, be honest with me. She said, be honest. Because you're always honest. Do I look big in this? Yeah, I did. I said, if I'm being honest, yeah, you do. <laughs> I said, but to be fair to you, it is a small bathroom. <laughs> what is... What is... What is... <laughs> Saturday's come round, we've set off to see Nigel Ben. And because it's a posh do, I've took the 1.1 Ford Fiesta popular gear. Because I'm doing all right, ripping in. <laughs> and I said I worked very bright, didn't I? I've pulled in at Morrison's for petrol, right? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? That, what is going on? Why can't we just have it used, how it used to be? I'll tell you a quick true story. I went in Morrison's two weeks ago and you can you can scan your own shopping now. Now, I know you can probably done this for years, but I, I don't like that. It, it scares me. I've only got a basket and it, it went, I thought, well, it can't be that hard, can it? So I put my basket on that little sticky out shelf a bit that you get on barbecues. <laughs> and it went, touch the screen to start. Went, Have you got your own bag? <laughs> Not with me. <laughs> Scan the item. I went, Bleep. place the item in the bag. Scan the item. Bleep. Place the item in the bag. Now everything was going all right till I got to my four pack of skull. Because we're having a quiet night. I've scanned this skull. Red light went off, alarm went off, the whole thing went mental. I'm like a rabbit in headlights. And you know Brittany that stands and watches you? <laughs> and you think she's waiting to help you? She's not. She's waiting for you to fuck mess up. That's what she's doing. <laughs> Brittany's straight over. What have you done? I said, I haven't done all. She went, you've done some Because red light's going off and alarm's going off. I said, I've scammed my skull. She went, skull? I said, I'm having a quiet night. She said, we need to verify that you're 18. <laughs> she said, I can see that you are. She went like that with his card on the screen. She went, carry on. Now, you ladies are going to know what I've done wrong now. 
I scanned my coriander. I was making a curry. It went, scan the item. I went, blip, place the item in the bag. Place the item in the bag. Please place the item in the bag. And I went, I have done. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the screen at middle of Morris. You watch them. They all, all, all biddies talk to the screen at middle of Morrison's. Unexpected item in the baggage area. I've got in there. I'll well, watch some petrol. You can pay for your petrol at the kiosk or at the pump. I didn't know you could do that. Now, you people in here tonight, you're a lovely audience. You probably do a lot of motorway miles. And I've done, I'm like this, mate. To that little woman in kiosk. Oh! Petrol. <laughs> pump four. Pump the fucking button. Pump four. Today we go. Pump the fucking button. This voice come over at Tannoy. Do you want to pay at the kiosk or at the pump? I'm like, what the? <laughs> so I went, either. <laughs> this voice said, you've got to make a decision. <laughs> Pressure's on now, isn't it? <laughs> I've got four cars behind me going, come on, Nob, everyone is petrol. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll pay you like you always do. She said, well, press the button that says pay at the kiosk. This old fella helped me. She said, you've got to push that button if you want to pay in there, mate. I said, thanks, pal. Marched into the petrol station, fuming, bright red. They're all taking me out of me. <laughs> Little woman behind the counter, I thought, I can take her. <laughs> I said, what happened to customer service? She said, I beg your pardon. I said, customer service. Whatever happened to that? She said, I don't know what you mean. Now, most of you lovely people here will remember when he went to the petrol station when you were kids with your dad, a bloke used to fill it up for you, didn't he? He did. He had brown pants, brown smock, little badge, flat cap, and he filled it up for you with a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. My kids don't believe me. Who's put it behind his ear? Well, he filled your car up. Four star. Do you remember that? And my kids don't believe me. You can't use your phone now. Because that's dangerous. He had a fag. <laughs> As I'm coming out of Halifax, which is the best thing to do if ever you go there. <laughs> Some of you might remember, we've got two things that we're dead proud of at Halifax. As you get to click on this fax on top, there's a sign saying, highest motorway in England, 1,221 feet above sea level. And then the other thing we're dead proud of is that bloke that built his house in Midland Motorway. <laughs> now, obviously, <laughs> you two have become the butt of the jokes tonight, but I apologise for that. But th these, these lovely people in will tell you, he didn't do that, but I were in Devon just before Christmas last year, and this young lad come up to me and he went, here, mate, can I have a word? But he sounded like Jethro. I said, go on then. He went, why did that bloke build his house in Millet Motorway? I, I said, you are. He went, why would you build it there? I said, he didn't. He went, you said he did. I said, it's a joke. He said, well, what's it doing there then? I said, because when they built the motorway, it wouldn't move, so they went round him. He went, no, bad. And walked off. And he didn't, really, he didn't really build it there. And he didn't have to not move either. He were on marshland, so they had to go around him. Anyway, as I've got to Little House on Prairie, a little bit of knowledge there for you. I've seen blue lights in rear view mirror, police. Now, if there's any police in tonight, you do a great job. Because <laughs> Russell knows I'm not supposed to be here tonight. I'm supposed to be speaking at a police dinner. But they're going to cover for me and say I were there anyway. Now, I don't, if you've seen these matrix things that tell you what to do, they're all over the shop now. Don't hug the middle rate lane. Slow workforce in the road. All these different ones. Me and my wife got done the other week for indecent exposure. I like to call it making love on the hard shoulder. Well, it weren't my fault. It said half a mile, park and ride. You do as you're told, don't you? I've pulled over. This policeman's come up to my car window and I've upset him straight away. I didn't mean to, but he did the universal language and he went. 
And I went, zzzz, because mine's a gear. <laughs> He's brushed the crisps off his chest. I'm, I'm not being funny, but when they've got you banged to rights, they get right cocky, don't they? And he went, are we in some sort of a hurry? I said, pardon, officer. He went, are we in some sort of a hurry? I said, well, I'm not in a hurry, but I need to get there. I'm going to the Midland Hotel tonight in Manchester. I'm doing a dinner with Nigel Ben, the Dark Destroyer, the boxer. 650 people, black tie, mixed audience. He said, are we some sort of a comedian? <laughs> yeah, I was tempted at that point. <laughs> he said, the national speed limit is 70 miles an hour. You're doing 88. I said, well, you challenge me. He said, you what? I said, you threw down the gauntlet. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, it said to Junction 17, 10 minutes. I thought, I can do that in eight. If, if you get your foot down, we've all done it, and you? You've all done that. You get in your car, it says, sat down, says two hours, 20, and you go, I'll do it in 2.10. Hope to knock it off, don't you? We've all done it. Loads of you out there will have done that. When I played rugby, I worked the greatest player in the world. I had some great times at Halifax, though. So. Uh, we used to go to a nightclub after training called Acapulco. <laughs> She's off again, look. If you've never been to Acapulco, it's advertised at the moment on a radio station as having Yorkshire's largest outdoor smoking area. <laughs> that is a quality place, ain't it? You young lads now are thinking, I'll get a card off you after me. I've got to go there, haven't I? I first time I went to Acapulco, I thought, I can't believe everybody's a good dancer. Everybody will like that. It went carpet. <laughs> Everybody were like that. This girl come over one night, and we used to play grab a granny night, didn't we? Because the ladies used to play ugliest bloke contest. You had to dance with ugliest bloke, didn't you, ladies? Whoever won got a drink, and we'd play grab a granny. We'd go up to girls and say stuff like, are you a natural blue? <laughs> I once said to this girl, act your age, and she died. <laughs> now, I'm not the best looking lad in the world. I'll get that in before any of the ladies do. This girl come over one night. Now, I haven't been crude, have I, Russ? I've just been cheeky. She come over one night like that. She's obviously been on Wicked. And she come up to me. Now, don't take it for how it's meant to be, because if I tell you, if I make it up, you won't believe me. She said, do you want to come back to my house? for a shag. Right. Now, you're thinking what I was thinking at that time. Class. We got back to her house, she paid for a taxi. I'm from Yorkshire, result. That's two and a half pints, that taxi. Then she started showing me around. She said, this is my washing machine, it's a silver one. Yeah, I thought that. I thought everybody had them. If it'd been a washer dryer, I'd have been impressed. She said, this is my fridge freezer, that's silver, it matches my washer. I said, that's nice. She said, do you want to look inside the house now? We got in, she said, pour yourself a drink, I'll slip into something more comfortable. I thought, yeah, a coma would be nice, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've gone to the fridge for a cherry cola. Because I want to be on form. <laughs> and then she said the words that every bloke loves. She said, I'll go upstairs, I'll put an outfit on. Now, it don't matter where I go in the country or wherever I go, all you lads now are thinking your favourite outfit. And some of the ladies, obviously. So she said to me, I'll go upstairs, I'll put an outfit on. I'm thinking, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I... <laughs> Is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> I worried whole two weeks ago, and the young lad at back stood up and he went, SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking, I wonder which hole to put it, don't matter. So she. She's called me up two minutes later. She stood in bedroom doorway like John Savola from Saturday Night Fever. Both feet lost in bottom at door. This hand's in top corner. I'm thinking she's holding the doorway up. She looked like an acro. <laughs> she's got a full length see-through negligee here that goes right to the floor. Now, there's a couple of young lads in tonight who have a clue <laughs> what a see-through negligee is. This young lad, you seem like a good sport. Are you at glasses, mate? I've got a lad at home about your age. How old are you? Nah, he's 10, my lad. Uh, but <laughs> he looks well, doesn't he? 
basically, it's a nighty like your nanny used to wear. But it's totally see-through. Get that thought out of your head. So obviously, obviously ladies, because it's see-through, and she's like that, as I get to the top of stairs, I can see everything. Jeans, T-shirt, <laughs> everything. We had this night of passion. <laughs> or as we say in Yorkshire, we got it on. I know there's something not quite right. I thought, I'm not saying all now. I'll wait till morning when I've had my full fry up and my pot of tea. Because <laughs> I'm having my brekker. I looked across at this lass that I don't recognise from the night before and it wasn't her hour, it was just a tiff. I said she was faking it. She said she was asleep. Bastard. <laughs> anyway, we're married now. Uh, but <laughs> there's not a day goes by when I don't try and keep that flame flickering. I said to her the night, how about you getting on top? Because normally she sleeps on the bottom bunk. <laughs> I said, why don't we try the new missionary position? She said, what's that? I said, you lie flat on the bed and I bugger off to Africa. <laughs> I like that one. Now, I promised Russell, I said, I won't go crude, I'll just cheek you. And that's finally, I don't mind how far you go with that. Uh, now, what you do in your own bedroom is up to you. Now, we've tried all the condoms. You young lads, don't buy the ribbed ones. They taste nothing like ribs. Really plastic, if anything. We've tried the illuminous ones, I were covered in moths. What? For all of a bloody bedroom, all laid in bed like Darth Vader. Hey, she loved it, her little face lit up. But the, the best ones are the new. The, <laughs> I'm just waiting here, right? Three, two, one, you're back in the room. We've got. The best one is, is a new one for them that suffer from premature ejaculation. It's got your attention, hasn't it? <laughs> have you noticed that, ladies? All lads went, shut up a minute, let's have a listen to this. <laughs> it's a brilliant invention. It's a condom with anaesthetic in the end in the little bulby bit. So that what happens is when you pull in your old fella, it numbs it. Or you can wear it inside out. You don't have to wake her up. <laughs> Simple, really, isn't it, when you think about it? I, uh, I love coming to see people like yourselves because uh, there's two types of audience. There's one that sits there and goes, go on, make me laugh, you think you're funny. And then there's another type of audience like yourselves tonight that go, let's give the lad a chance. If we give him a chance, we might have a good time. Uh, and I thank you for that. Because yeah, like I said earlier, I'm not a diva, me. I'm just from an ordinary lad from Yorkshire. I grew up in a family of nine, eight really, but some lad over at road lived in our house. Five nights a week, I don't know where we were. It was were, it were quite, a, honestly, he just lived in our house. His dad worked nights. Um, that's true, back, by the way. And our, our house were really strange. I remember going home from school one day and saying to my mum, Mum, what is a transvestite? She said, I'm your dad, your mum's over there. <laughs> Proper strange house. Only in Yorkshire, that, innit? We do, we do daft stuff, like when we go home in a taxi, and when we get smacked back outside our house, we go, anywhere, anywhere here will do. <laughs> <laughs> we can live there, don't we? Don't. We do daft stuff, honestly. I've turned into my dad. I've, sta I've turned into my dad. I've got three kids, like I say. My youngest daughter, Ruby, she's nine. And I adore all my kids, but she's wonderful. She'll said, she said to me tonight, I put me so on, she went, are you going joking? She calls it going joking. I said, I'm going joking, darling. Where are you going? Runcorn. She went, oh, good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's brilliant. And I've turned into my dad. She did something wrong. You ladies will get this. She did something wrong two weeks ago. My wife said to me, Lee. I went, what? She went, tell her. I went, what? She went, just tell her. I went, Ruby. She went, what? I went, I'm telling you. She went, what? I went, I've told you. I said, I won't tell you again. I've told you once. And then the wife says to me, I'm sick of telling her. Nobody said anything. We haven't. Nobody said, oh, I've just paid £55 this week for another block of 10 swimming lessons. I don't mind paying that. If you're a good parent, you teach him to swim as quickly as you can, don't you? But I'll cast your minds back now. 
you're a good audience, so just cast your mind back and fall in. It's not a panto, but join in. Do you remember when we learnt to swim at school for nothing? Weren't they good days, Em? I were a milk monitor. We got milk for free. We all had to stand round pool with a little white square polystyrene float with teeth marks in it. <laughs> Can anybody explain to me why we ate the floats? <laughs> didn't, matter what, didn't matter which one you picked up, it had teeth marks in it. Who eats polystyrene floats? We had to stand round pool and wait till teacher said you could get in. And then you used to make you dive for that black rubber brick that you couldn't really lift off my at pool. Then you had to swim 27 lengths in your jammers. Everybody else had Paisley. I had Andy Pandy ones. I looked a right, no, I looked an idiot. He had a bamboo cane, and every time you got near it, he moved it. <laughs> Little bastard. When you were shattered, you had to take your bottoms off, tie them in and out, and pull them off your head. Make them into a life head. What the f what was that all about? Can you imagine all them people on holiday swimming out at sea and getting into difficulty? Shit, if I'd have had my jammers on, I'd have been all right. <laughs> you can't make no out of a pair of speedos, can you? Next time you go on holiday, green flag, it's okay to swim. Red flag, don't swim. Yellow flag, put your jammers on. <laughs> oh, you might look a twat, but it might save your life. I said I like coming to see people like yourself, but I like my holidays too. I'm not the best flyer in the world, but last year she taught me to Cyprus. So we flew from Leeds Bradford, because some idiot decided to build an airport, middle of nowhere, crosswinds, foggy as hell, and you can't take off. <laughs> they sent out a stewardess who spent 15 minutes telling me what's going to go wrong. Now the lads in the room will back me up on this. They've changed it now. They say, even if you're a frequent flyer, and you know, you fly a lot, please put your magazines and your papers down and give her your undivided attention. And then the wife says to you, stop staring at her. <laughs> They've just told me to look at her. Apparently not like that. <laughs> she spent 15 minutes telling me what's gonna go on. She went, and they're beautiful, aren't they, some of them? And she's, she's unless you fly where fly, maybe. She's playing with her hair, and it does it for me, that, and she went, when you hit the shark-infested waters from 35,000 feet, we will give you a whistle. <laughs> Cheers. We'll also give you a light for attracting their attention. What's that about? Oh, Joe's over here. <whistles> <whistles> oh, I can't hear me. Don't panic, you see me light. Wouldn't they be better off giving you a big stick and a knife? Just give you a bit of a chance. You're all intelligent people in here today. Let's just imagine we've all hit the water and down front we've got a 21 foot great white shark. Am I bothered? We're not bothered, are we? We've got us whistles. <laughs> and if you don't sort off, we're going to blow him, aren't we? He's going to be shitting himself. You can imagine King Shark back off, lads. He's got a whistle on him. Let's get this idiot. Idiots over here, they've only got life jackets on. I shouldn't say this, but why do they give you life jackets? There's always a mountain. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? It is, and then 350 years after that, there's just 200 decayed life jackets hanging about. <laughs> and then 2,000 years after that, an archaeologist comes along and says, oh, used to be a sea here. <laughs> we took off. We took off from Leeds Bradford. Typical, it turbulence straight away. Whoosh, everybody on plane. <laughs> when we got to Carousel, <laughs> we're getting his cases off, your pictures were up. You could buy the picture. <laughs> it was like Pepsi Max, I'll have had a top up. Whee. You young lads have got a lot to answer for as well. They used to say, we will shortly be passing through the cabin with the refreshments trolley. They've always said that, but now they follow up with, but unreasonable behaviour won't be tolerated on this plane. And then they sell you Stella. <laughs> they do, don't they? They sell your wife, Peter, on offer, three for 10 quid, and then tell you to behave. Well, don't give us that then. Give us Morrison's own, 
or Skull? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with Skull? I can have ten tins of Skull. I want to sing rugby songs, give you a big kiss and a cuddle. Two tins of Stella? I'll kick your face in. <laughs> Sorry, I think I can kick your face in. Can you imagine? You're just coming into London. You're all asked turns and she goes, I'm oh, nearly there yet, darling. Don't speak to me, daft cow. Do you ever look at me? I've had three tins of Stella. They even do a Stella light now. She just gets a slap for that. But, <laughs> but the words you always fear when you're on a plane. Tarquin, the air steward, lovely lad. He come running out. Pilots collapsed. The pilots collapsed. I'm not kidding. He's fallen over and nobody knows what's up with him. Can anybody fly a plane? Well, I can't fly a plane, but being British and from north, I put my hand up. I said, over here, cock, I'll have a crack. <laughs> I'm not joking, it was nearly 20 minutes before I got it off the ground. <laughs> got to lean right back. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you with this on flying. Who's been in one of them, one of them plays where as he brings it into land, everybody claps. Have you, have you been up? Don't clap him next time, that's his job. That's what he's meant to do. What are you going to do if he crashes it? Yeah, shit that. <laughs> we were two hours on a bus. We got to this hotel in Cyprus. Half past three in the morning. I'm jet lagged. And this little foreign looking fella said, can I take your case, sir? Well, I didn't know it didn't work for him. Never saw him again. I had to wear a thong for two weeks. The wife were really upset. Were baggy on me. Now, This is where you lovely ladies get your own back now. You're thinking he ain't got a wife or a girlfriend. Look at the state of him. I've had my fair share of girlfriends. I met my first girlfriend on an 18 to her piece holiday. Do you remember them? <laughs> they were good times then. She was a lovely girl. She looked like Cheryl Cole, all this smaller and different looking. <laughs> but she had one boot bigger than the other. So I told my mum. And my mum said, we're getting a bit older now, you're 49. She <laughs> She said, let's explain, women's boobs are exactly the same size, they're slightly different. I said, I know that, Mum, but she had one like that, one like this. She entered my sweat t-shirt competition and won first and third. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Russell, you said they'd be nice people, and they are, aren't they? They are nice people. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give the lads a bit of advice. You ladies, I hope I haven't offended you because you're brilliant. You really are, and I mean that most sincerely. You do, you put up with a lot. I just want to give the lads some advice. It's me and Russ were talking earlier. He's rugby owning and rugby league, but with something in common straight away, sport. And, 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 and like I say, I like the guy's a nice fella. And other people have come up and said hello as well. But just be very careful with sport. It can be a marriage breaker. Some of the lads might remember this. We used to train Tuesdays, have a pint, go home. Wednesdays, coach the kids. Thursdays, couple of pints after training. Fridays, coach the kids. Saturdays, play rugby, go out with your mates all Saturday. Sunday, pubs didn't open all day. You'd watch Junior's play Sunday morning, go into the club for a couple of beers, go home and have your dinner, and go back to the club Sunday night. Monday night, well, that was family time. <laughs> well, not all bastards. As I'm coming to end of my first marriage, <laughs> I've gone in at half past five in the morning for the third morning on trot. Because when we were younger, if we were a bit rough from the night before, we went back on it, didn't we, lads? It was called going on a bender, wasn't it? And sometimes we'd go on three-day benders. I've got in at half past five in the morning for the third morning on trot. Don't ever, ever say this, you young lads. As I've opened bedroom door thinking she'll be asleep, she weren't asleep. She was sat bolt upright in bed like a scrapyard Alsatian. Now, be very careful, don't, don't say this. She said to me, look at the state of you. Just look at the state of you. It's half past five in the morning. Third morning on trot, you've come in like that. You've got a young lad next door in his bedroom. He's upset. She said, I'm in here and I'm really upset. You're working today. So in two hours, you've got a very difficult choice to make. And I said, bacon.
Don't ever say that. I asked uh, <laughs> Yorkshire bacon. I asked Russell what the, the crack were today. He said, like, it's, a, it's a long couple of days. We just want to have a bit of fun after dinner and what have you. I hope we've done that. I know a lot of lads have come on their own. Will you be allowed out again? Uh, the only reason that these lovely ladies let us out is because, you know, we've all got, we're all blokes and we're a bit daft and we've got a beer sat nav in his head. Some of the young lads are looking at me thinking, what's a beer sat nav? I'll explain. The older lads know what it is. It's when you go out on a Friday, but you get home Saturday. You don't know it's Saturday till you get back. You get out of taxi with that key that doesn't fit. <laughs> that key's all right when you go out. It's solid brass. When you get back, it's like Yuri Geller's had hold of it, isn't it? <laughs> and then as you look at your house and you pay a taxi driver, you try to talk to the key. And then we shut one eye. Because it looks bigger with one eye, doesn't it, lads? And then we go, come on, let us in. Gunner is in, are you? Don't, don't fuck it, don't mess about. <laughs> if you let me in after four or five goes, I promise I'll, I'll never do this again. <laughs> As we get to the house, we start scratching around that brass plate, don't we, lads? Try to get in. <laughs> we do. <laughs> and that wakes them up, doesn't it, ladies? <laughs> but you don't come and help us, do you? We can hear our bedroom window pissed again, no, Ed. <laughs> after 20 minutes, you let yourself in. Because you forgot on way home in taxi, you had a text to leave the door open anyway. <laughs> and then you're on all fours in hallway trying not to be sick. Because they're not right keen on that either. And then while you're on all fours in hallway, you wait for room to come round so you can get off it. <laughs> Eventually it comes round, you get off, you make your way upstairs, trip on top step, and headbutt bedroom door open. And there she is in bed, Attila the Hun. <laughs> you. And that's where we're lucky, lads, because our beer sat nav comes in straight away and it goes, turn around when possible. <laughs> At the junction of the bathroom, go straight onto the spare room. You have reached your destination. That's why the letter's out again. Russell, thanks very much for having me, mate. They've been absolutely lovely people. Can I go bless everybody? Can I go bless? Thanks for listening. Can we want more? One more. One more. No, I've got. I don't know what to do now. I've never got this far. <laughs> I'll do this because uh, somebody asked me to do it earlier. Uh, I don't know if it's seen me, but. I hope it goes down well because you've been brilliant and there's not worse than getting to end and then dying on your ass. So I'll do it anyway, but you better get it because I told it, I think it was Burnley that I did it and nobody got it. Have you got to be in from Burnley? Right, you better get it this week, mate. Here we go. It's a bit of a shaggy dog story, but I love it. My mate went to college and he studied journalism, working with papers and magazines. And basically what happened, he passed and he got offered a job. The money were amazing. But we're a tiny little village paper in the mi middle of nowhere, deep south of America, about three miles square. Type of village where your brother and your dad are the same bloke. Do you know what I mean? Where the town's twinned with itself. <laughs> and the family tree goes straight up and down. <laughs> Who said Halifax then? <laughs> it's his first day work paper. So editor said to him, why don't you go into the village and interview someone about life in our village? and write me a little paragraph. I'll put it on the front page. He went, what? He went, just je life in general. He went, that's dead easy. He said, it's your first day, I'm looking after you. Oh, he said, I've got it. So he got into the village with his notebook and his dictaphone and his pen, and he spots this hillbilly kid on his porch, on his swing, singing his head off, playing his banjo. He thinks he looks a character, I'll have a word with him. So he's gone over, he said, excuse me, mate. He said, I've just started today, I'm working for paper. And for tonight's edition, we're doing a piece about life in the village. Has that ever happened in your life that's ever made you really, really happy? And this young farmer said, don't let me down. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. He said, well, there was this one time. Huh? 
the farmer to the left of us, one of his sheep got lost. Who? He said, nah, I got a posse together. We were looking for that sheep. Who? We found it. We all fucked it. He said, I, he said, I can't put that on the front page, mate. He said, it's disgusting. I've only just started today. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you another chance. He said, has anything else ever happened in your life that's ever made you really, really happy? And this young farmer said, don't let me down. <laughs> the ling, ding, 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 ding. He said, well, there was this one time. <laughs> the farmer to the other side of the road. One of his goats got lost. <laughs> he said, I, I got a posse to get we went looking for that goat. We found it, and we all fucked it. Listen, mate. He said, I've told you twice now. <laughs> he said, I can't put that on the front page. He said, kids will be reading it, and women. He said, it's disgusting. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you one last chance. He said, but I'm going down a different route because you're not grasping this. He said, has that ever happened in your life that's ever made you really, really sad? And this young farmer said, don't let me down. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. He said, well, well, I got lost once. Thank <laughs> 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 God for that. All right, chuffed about that. I'm right chuffed about that. They cost me two pints then. I said to you, I said to you earlier about uh, meeting nice people and uh, try to get it right because it's, it's getting harder, like I said, about not upsetting people and you can't say this, you can't say that. And at the end of the day, I think comedy is what it says it is. It's a joke and it's, you know, it's, it's not meant to be offensive, depending on how far you go. I, I'm only telling you because I'd, when I said I'd done the cruise, I, I'd done my first show and sometimes you have a good night, like tonight, I'll be buzzing all the way home tonight. I met some lovely people and I go back and my wife will say to me, how did it go? I said, they were brilliant. Sometimes you get away with it. And I got away with it on this ship and I'm waiting to do my second show and I'm thinking, I can't do this. You know, I'm, I'm talking myself out of stuff. And I've got in lift and I'm a typical ordinary guy, flip-flops, shorts, T-shirt over the shoulder, glass full of all-inclusive. Because <laughs> I'm working. And this old ear's got into the lift, and there's just me and her in the lift. Now, she was lovely. She's got white curly hair, big bull font like that, white curly hair. Do you remember when you were kids? I would be under in the lift going, one o'clock, two o'clock on her hair. And she turned to me and she said, she could see I was nervous. She went, hey, enjoying your cruise? I said, it's okay. She said, just okay. I said, well, actually, I'm working on the ship. She said, oh, what do you do? So just for a laugh, because I like to live for today. Well, I said, mate, no, I didn't, I did I, I, I want to say that. I said, uh, she said, what do you do? I said, I'm, uh, I'm the ship's gigolo. <laughs> yeah, I thought it were quite funny as well. <laughs> but as I got to my floor and I got out, this other old ego in, she said, last night, you were fantastic. Just be very careful what you say. <laughs> You've been absolutely wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. The bar's open till next Tuesday, is it? Tuesday next, next week. Uh, thanks for listening. Good night, God bless everybody. Good night, God bless. <laughs>